let's take a look at how to complete pedigree worksheet number two. First of all, how do you know if something is dominant or recessive? If it skips a generation then comes back later, that has to be recessive. You might think, ooh, look, see it skipped it right here. But did it come back? No. It was here and then it was again in the third generation and these didn't have kids anyway. So it never went away in one generation and came back in the next. So this must be a dominant trait. So Huntington's disease is dominant. So we are gonna use a capital H to represent Huntington's. And lowercase h without Huntington's disease is gonna be lower and that's recessive. Now go through and label each person with their genotype. First of all, it's easiest to do the recessive ones first, the normal that are not colored in. So I'm gonna draw an empty circle and of course an empty square. So this would be lowercase, lowercase and all of the not colored in ones will be too lowercase. Now, if it's dominant, then there is definitely one capital letter, but we don't know the other capital letter until later. You work through the rest of this and figure that out. Then I think you'll be able to answer the rest of the questions. All right, dominant or recessive? This is Hitchhiker's Thumb. We don't have it, we don't have it, we don't have it, and then all of a sudden we have it. So, all these generations, nobody saw it, and then all of a sudden it appears. So this must be a recessive trait. So, this time they've colored the recessive ones. Last time they colored the dominant ones. So, let's make ourselves a little chart. If it's filled in, it's recessive. If it's hollow, it's dominant. They show the pedigree for hitchhiker's thumb. They colored the ones with hitchhiker's thumb. That's the recessive. By the way, hitchhiker's thumb is when you hold up your thumb and it kind of bends way back. I don't really have that. It's not perfectly straight, but it's not way back either. So dominant is a normal thumb. So let's just put normal. We use the letter of the dominant trait. So let's use a capital N. If you put straight instead of normal, that's fine too. Then you would use a capital S. So hitchhikers has to be the same letter, lowercase. So we've labeled the two colored in ones with the recessive lowercase. Now, every dominant trait will have at least one capital. So capital, capital. Now, these both have a capital and they have kids with the lowercase. Therefore, they must both be carriers and they have a lowercase n. Their parent must have carried it. Oh wait, we have some inbreeding here. So it must have come because the grandparents had it so let's see what's going on. So this father must have been the carrier because he's the one that's related to the, the mom of this one. So he must have been a carrier. 
she may or may not have been a carrier. We don't know. In fact, maybe this gene came from her instead of him and it was a coincidence. But it didn't have to be. We're assuming that with this in inbreeding, he's more likely the carrier. Then go up to the grandparents. One of them has to be the carrier. We don't know who. So one is a carrier. Okay, then they could both be a carrier. You don't know. Now, this person had to have a parent who was a carrier. So either the mom or the dad, probably the one that's related, not necessarily. Once again, one or both parents could be the carrier. Right? Now, over here, it doesn't show up. So we don't know if these are carriers or not. We know we have one normal, but that could have come from either parent. One has to be a carrier. One has to have a lowercase. But we don't know about the other one. They might both be carriers. It might be only one as a carrier. We don't know. So this is as far as we can go right here. We don't know if they passed on the gene to any of these people or not. So at this point, we have to stop. Because Hitchhiker's Thumb is not sex linked. If it was, we'd have a lot more information about who passed it on. But it's not sex linked, so it's much more difficult to determine who is the carrier. For number nine, it asks you to name the two individuals that have Hitchhiker's Thumb. That would be these two. Name them, in other words, give them the number and letter designation. So IV-1 and IV-3 would be their names. Number 12. The pedigree to the right shows a family's pedigree for colorblindness. Colorblindness is a sex-linked trait. Which sex can be carriers of colorblindness and not have it. Well, obviously the females can carry it. Males either have it or they don't. Let's go through and figure out the genotype for all of these individuals. Okay, this is a guy, so his chromosomes are definitely XY. Then he is colorblind. The colorblind gene is always on the X chromosome, so we'll put XC for colorblind. He does not have a normal X to overcome this recessive colorblind gene. She is a female. She is XX. And we don't know yet what her second gene has to be. So let's wait just a minute. The dad has to pass on an X to the daughters and a Y to the sons. So all of his daughters, he passes on an X with a C. So all of his daughters will be carriers. His sons all get a Y. So his sons are all just fine and do not have the colorblindness. It's kind of weird, huh? The dad always passes the carrier gene to the daughters. And his sons are fine. Now, the mom either passed on, did she pass on a normal X or a not so normal X? Well, considering all of her sons are fine, none of them have the condition, and all of her daughters are carriers from the dad, but they, are, they do not have colorblindness, and with five kids, it's very likely that both of hers are regular X's. We don't know for sure, but we have a pretty good chance. So let's just assume that these are all normal, plain X's that she passed on to her daughters and sons. This one is a carrier, so we know she has one recessive X and one normal X. This one's a carrier. Recessive X, normal X. 
another carrier, recessive x, normal x, recessive x, normal x. This one has it. He has to have that recessive x and a y, because he's a male. This male does not have it. He has to have a normal x and a y. Normal x and y, normal x and y. This is a carrier. She has to have a recessive x and a normal x. Normal x, normal y. This female does not have it, and she is not a carrier, so she must have two normal x's. This guy has it. He has a colorblind x and a normal y. Colorblind x, normal y. Colorblind x, normal y. Colorblind x, normal y. This girl does not have it. She is not a carrier. Two normal x's. Oh, and this one, this female does have it, so she has two recessive colorblind X's. Okay, let's make sure this works. If this mom passes on her colorblind, the dad passes on his colorblind, that's how this girl gets both. Okay, colorblind from dad, normal from mom, that works. Colorblind from dad. Ooh, wait, the Y had to come from the dad. Regular from dad, colorblind from mom. Okay, that works. Regular from mom, regular from dad, that works too. So we are on the right track. You can finish this problem. In the next problem, first, we don't know what this trait is. We know these people have the trait and these do not, but that's about it. The trait, whatever it is, does it have to be dominant or recessive? Well, since it skips a generation and then comes back, it's got to be recessive. Let's use the letter A. So if you have a lowercase a, that will be recessive. And that means the person has the trait. Then a capital A will be dominant. And that person does not have the trait because it was not colored in. Start with your recessive individuals. Label them all lowercase a. Go back, give every dominant individual a capital A, and then go back and figure out the rest of your genotypes. There will be a few that you can't figure out, but most of these you can. And especially any of the ones they ask about, you will be able to figure out. I believe you'll be able to answer the last question on your own.